Hey guys, and thanks for stopping by the uh, channel. Um, this week we have a really good discussion topic regarding uh, some exciting gaming news that happened last week. Um, and we got about a week to kind of, um, you know, um, absorb the news uh, that, that hit last week. And um, kind of, um, uh, I've been kind of monitoring Twitter and uh, YouTube and a couple of social medias to see how people are reacting to it. And I think, um, you know, now that it's been about a week, uh, it'll be good to kind of discuss, um, you know, the, uh, the, the news that hit last week and what it means uh, from a business perspective. So uh, if you've been in the gaming industry or in gaming overall, uh, the news last week hit um, when Microsoft announced right before pre-orders that they purchased uh, ZeniMax Media. And ZeniMax Media is the parent company to Bethesda Publishing. So with that, they've acquired all the studios underneath uh, Bethesda. And uh, this is a huge get for Microsoft and Game Pass uh, to get uh, you know, IPs such as Doom, uh, Dishonored, um, you know, Elder Scrolls, Starfield. Um, so there's there's definitely, um, it's going to bolster their Game Pass lineup and incentivize, um, you know, uh, not only current but new subscribers to join Game Pass. Um, but I, I think after a week of kind of monitoring all the, all the reactions out there, I, I think this particular... Uh, video is going to be focusing uh, from a business perspective. Uh, so uh, if you take your gamer hat off and look at what happened uh, through the eyes or through the lens, uh, you know, uh, the optics of business, um, you're going to see why uh, Microsoft, in my opinion, is adopting a blue ocean strategy. This is something that Nintendo started to adopt uh, after the GameCube. And it led them to innovate uh, with the Wii. And, and even though they failed with the Wii U, uh, you know, they, they learned from their mistakes. And, you know, they, they have a successful Switch uh, that's currently selling like hotcakes right now, right? So with Microsoft, I believe, you know, they, they are adopting a blue ocean strategy from a business perspective in order to grow... Uh, their business in the gaming industry and and I think um, the probably the the point when they probably started to adopt this type of a mindset um, and, and who knows I, I don't know if, if they looked at Nintendo and saw them doing this and, and maybe you know um, was looking at the bigger picture overall but um, I think what happened was you know they, they got into the, the the gaming industry with the original Xbox they learned a lot from it and and the follow-up to the Xbox was the 360 and that was hugely successful for them uh, I believe you know it took the ps3 a while to catch up but, when, but by the time it caught up we we're already going into the next generation and I think with the launch of the ps4 and the Xbox one uh, Microsoft stumbled out of the gates. Um, I think they were shooting very high to be that one set-top box to do everything. And I think the industry wasn't really ready for that. And um, it, it, in a way, I think uh, it was uh, it's beneficial on Microsoft's side that they did stumble and they got walloped by Sony uh, in this you know current generation before we go into the new generation uh, at the end of 2020. But because they got walloped uh, so big out of the gate and they had so many missteps, um, you know I, I think you know from the outside looking in as a gamer, you, you a lot of people really thought, oh okay, Microsoft, um, you know after several years into the Xbox One, it seemed like they weren't really doing anything. And I think one thing gamers don't understand is that gaming is a business. It's all about the money and it's always been about the money. And and after that that stumble out of the gates, I believe that once Phil Spencer took over, he started looking at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture was, you know, why are they continually trying to, uh, you know, uh, go to war against uh, like Sony and Nintendo and, and whoever they felt was their competition, right? Uh, and, and I think they uh, they they looked at gaming as a whole. And and again, uh, you know, I, I've been gaming since the uh, early '80s, and I've seen the gaming industry change. And one of the things I want to reference is that gaming has become bigger and bigger in the last 20 years. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, with the Wii, it brought in a lot of casual gamers, um, but it also, you know, there was a big revolution with mobile gaming. So if you 
look at the facts. And there was an article uh, in TechCrunch uh, sometime earlier this year in June where TechCrunch referenced, uh, um, I believe it was New Zoo Statistics. They had some stats regarding the gaming industry, and they're not the only one. There's other statistical research companies out there that look at the gaming industry as a whole. And one of the biggest things that they've noted is that the global gaming business by the end of 2020 is going to be over $160 billion dollars. And you heard me, $160 billion. Last year, Sony brought in a little bit over $6 billion in revenue for, for last year. So this year, you know, if, if they're on par in terms of an increase, you know, they, they could possibly pull in, you know, close to $7 billion in sales this year. They, they did have, you know, titles like The Last of Us and uh, Ghost of Tsushima. So I think, you know, they can definitely hit those marks again. But if you think about the context of what how successful sony was with over 100 million consoles and how much revenue they pulled in the fact that that's a very small drop or percentage of the overall global uh, gaming you know revenue it, it really shows you why microsoft probably reevaluated their business model a few years ago and, and quite frankly i'm glad that they stumbled out of the blocks uh, and again um you know this this you know video is all about my perspective and my opinions on things i mean in the end guys only microsoft knows and until they publicly say what they're planning to do we're all just speculating we're all just guessing here uh looking from the outside in okay uh they have you know people that are running billion dollar businesses here and we're just the gamers yeah or it's, it's good fodder to, to talk about this it's great to have these discussions but in the end only they know right so when you look at the gaming industry as so on i'm pulling up some more stats uh from uh new zoo here and let me see if i can grab this stat here so the 2020 global games market okay a little bit over you know close to 160 billion dollars 50 percent of that market share or close to 50 percent is mobile gaming uh, and estimated to be about 77 billion dollars okay the other part the other half you know if 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 mobile is close to 50 percent the other 50 percent is split between pc gaming and console gaming and if you look at console gaming console gaming uh, accounts for about 45 billion dollars in revenue a year uh and then um the pc gaming accounts for 36 almost 37 billion so they're only a few billion behind consoles but think again the pc it's its own ecosystem whereas console is counting sony microsoft and nintendo in that ecosystem so if you were phil spencer and you were you you know you're you're sitting there and you have to pitch this to you know the the, uh, the CEO of Microsoft. Uh, I can't really pronounce his name, so I don't want to butcher his name. But you know who I'm talking about, right? If if, if at that critical point where they stumbled out of the gates, they realized, okay, who are we, who are we at Microsoft really competing against, right? So when they look at this and they look at the growth market of the gaming industry as a whole globally for the next ten years, they started to realize it's a lost cause to try to fight or try to you know um, you know outcompete Sony. Uh, or Nintendo and you know um, and they're gonna have their fair share there's a you know if you look at the whole gaming industry as a whole there's plenty of business for everybody to be successful in their own way so you know looking at this uh, you know I can tell you that from a business perspective uh, and this is why I you know I, I believe Microsoft adopted uh, the blue ocean strategy similar to how Nintendo did is basically looking at your business and the market that you're trying to, to, to you know, take and market share or mind share and figure out how to carve new business out of this, right? And I think what happened was, I mean, because they stumbled out of the blocks, I think they reevaluated what Xbox means. And that's where the inception of Game Pass came into play. And Microsoft, in the last few years, uh, as a whole, as a company, have really been embracing subscription-based model uh, for business. You know, they, they're no longer, you know, printing Office disk, Windows upgrade disk. Everything has been subscription-based. And, yeah, Windows, it's still OEM, and there's ways to get it. But uh, other, other software platforms that they've owned, they're going all digital. They're trying to build a subscription model around that, and it's been very successful. And they're taking the same culture mentality uh, as a company, uh, 
as Microsoft, a trillion, you know, a multi-trillion dollar company, and now they want to apply to every facet of their business, uh, you know, within Microsoft, whether that's Azure, uh, you know, um, service clouds, uh, whether that's, uh, you know, uh, Office, uh, whether that's going to be gaming, you know, and, and Xbox is a, a big chunk of that. And if you think about that, if, if the whole global gaming market is, you know, 160 billion projected for 2020, think about 10 years from now where that number is going to be, right? Just think about that. Even in an increase of, you know, let's say worst case scenario, 10 or 15 percent growth, which the gaming industry is growing more than 10 or 15 percent year, year over year. So it, that number is going to be pretty substantial. Uh, and because of that, I believe Game Pass kind of came out of this. And, and that's why they're going to invest into that ecosystem. You know, uh, Game Pass is a subscription based model. And, you know, you have a monthly fee and you have access to all these games. And in a way, it, you know, you think about it. I've been a long time old school gamer. I love collecting physical media. And I told myself, you know, digital is never going to be, you know, my, my only option. Right. Um, but if you think about the way Game Pass is positioned, it is truly, you know, ushering in the whole digital revolution. You know, it's it's trying to do what Netflix did to the movie industry to really take away the channel, the, you know, the, uh, the, the hard ma hardware manufacturing model, really reduce a lot of costs and bring everything into the digital age where there's higher profits. You know, there's less overhead, right? With things that, that you have to actually, you know, manufacture. So, so I think, and I feel that Microsoft really took game pass and started building upon Game Pass, and and I know this you know this acquisition shook the gaming industry because it's a huge acquisition. I mean, they played almost double of what Disney paid Star Wars, uh, you know, paid for Star Wars, you know, and and that seems to be the ongoing analogy with everybody on social media. They're like, oh my God, Star Wars were, was bought for about four billion, and Microsoft paid seven point five billion for this. Okay, so and and, and one of the arguments that I've I've heard online is that you know um, you know they're gonna do um, something very similar to how they've done and and kept uh, you know when when they purchase Mojang uh, with Minecraft and and I really don't see that argument being consistent with what's happening now now like you know when with Mojang uh, when they purchased Minecraft that was back in 2014 so that was during the the phase where they really haven't put Game Pass and their business model together with uh, with Xbox and on top of that you have to understand Minecraft was already well established it was a global phenomenon and right now Minecraft is a platform in itself so there's no reason to um, you know shake the apple cart for Minecraft uh, there's no reason to do that if anything the two billion dollars they spent on Minecraft they're making their money back on licensing uh, you know for for Minecraft for like merchandise and a whole bunch of other things you know gaming is probably a very small chunk of it but it keeps mind share with the kids that are playing Minecraft and they go out there buying Minecraft you know uh, clothing and Minecraft uh, toys and all that stuff I mean, I have a five-year-old son, and he's playing Minecraft, and he's already sucked into all the Minecraft, you know, um, you know, different things. I mean, from bed sheets to clothes to all that stuff. So Microsoft knows, you know, what they have acquired Minecraft for, and that was a totally different mindset when they when they purchased Mojang and purchased the licensing to Minecraft, right? So with Bethesda, it's totally a play to bolster the Game Pass lineup. So for everybody out there that thinks that the Bethesda, you know, IPs and the studios are going to uh, release multi-plat, you know, in my opinion, I, I think that's that's not going to happen. Why are you going to invest $7.5 billion to secure a publisher and all the IPs and you're going to give it away? That's That doesn't make really business sense. You know, I think what everybody's hearing right now in terms of what's being you know talked about and what's being stated it's all pr talk it's all marketing uh, it's you know the acquisition has been you know formally approved but it's going to take a while for everything to kind of you know uh, be finalized and it looks like it's not going to be finalized until close to the end of q2 in 2021 so everything that you're hearing right now is pr speak you know the whole case by case basis that's basically to not uh, you know uh, upset 
the current people at Bethesda, the studios and all that stuff, because, you know, they've had previous agreements and they're going to honor those pre- agree- uh, previous agreements. There's no reason to not honor those. Um, you know, they're exclusive for probably about a year. And, but once those exclusivity goes away, those two games, uh, was it um, Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop? You'll see them on the Xbox Game Pass. Um, they're, they're probably going to come back on the Xbox platform with some additional enhancements, but it'll be available Game Pass Day 1. They'll already have their their, their time on PS5. Um, but yeah, moving forward, I don't see any of the, the IPs, whether they're sequels or, or not, um, being brought to the PlayStation platform. Uh, Microsoft doesn't need PlayStation. Everybody's talking about, oh, they, they're gonna w- lose all this money, they can, they can make all this money going multi-plat on it. They don't need that money. I think what when 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 people are talking about that when you when you're making that type of an argument, you're looking short term. You're looking for a short term gain, and what Microsoft is building is a long term vision. And when you build a long term vision and and you're playing for the long game, you're going to put pieces into play to make people want to move to your subscription based model and it's going to be those uh, those ips that release day and date uh, that comes out on pc and on xbox but it's also available on game pass now i could be wrong and they can announce this you know later on that you know other titles are coming to playstation but for right now i, I you know i have you know based on what I believe from a business perspective, I'm taking off my gamer hat here, you know, and from a business perspective, I believe it's not going to go to the PlayStation. It's going to be very exclusive to the Xbox Game Pass ecosystem. And when Microsoft talks about they want people to play this anywhere, anytime on their own own grounds, yes, as long as they're using Game Pass. And that's why they will be leveraging Game Pass to, quite frankly, see if Nintendo or Sony would be willing to have Game Pass on their platforms i'm telling you it's that's that's how they're going to negotiate this they're going to bolster their lineup and then go back to these console manufacturers like a sony like a nintendo and say hey would you allow game pass on this because your audience will be able to play these games that are only playable on game pass or pc so uh, they're playing the long game and you know for me i've i've you know, I have a Sony PlayStation. I've, I've had a Sony PlayStation since the PS1 days, and I'm going to get the new PS5. Um, you know, they're trying to entice uh, people on PlayStation to play on Game Pass. And because Game Pass is also on PC, you know, it's it's basically, you know, saying, hey, if you don't like the Xbox hardware and you want to be loyal to Sony, keep that. But you can still play on PC, and if you subscribe to Game Pass, you'll get access to all the games. So either way, they win, right? Uh, they're trying to build up to be the premier uh, subscription model out there. And and just as they announced the acquisition and pre-orders came in the next day, in the same following week, what was announced by Amazon? Amazon announced their own subscription-based model called Luna, which is a much more similar subscription model to Microsoft. Um, though they are going to be, I believe, charging their subscription customers with specific channels at additional cost to get access to certain third part, third party publisher type games where it looks like there's going to be a Ubisoft channel. I wouldn't be surprised if EA comes in with an EA channel, but, but still it's, it's going to be games that are going to be readily available. Uh, you pay a monthly subscription and you get access to it uh, much different than Google Stadia. But I think, you know, Google Stadia needs to change their model. But, but this is why uh, I remember reading somewhere uh, um, about a year or two year ago that Phil Spencer was talking about, you know, competition and competition from other companies like an Amazon, like a Google coming into their space. And this is what he's talking about. And I think his, uh, you know, their whole total vision, long term vision and the platform, because Game Pass is the platform. It's going to be that platform that connects that console business with the PC business, with the mobile business. So earlier when I mentioned the whole global market, right, it's, you know, you have mobile, you have PC and you have console. And Game Pass is their platform. That's their one platform that crosses all those markets and gives them the best opportunity to capture money, business from the gamers that play in those particular markets. It's plain and simple, guys. It's all business. You know, Microsoft is not stupid. They're not a trillion dollar company here without understanding the business side of the market. And because 
gaming is going to be so much bigger than it is in years from now. I mean, back in the 90s when I was playing PlayStation and Nintendo and the 64, you wouldn't think this was coming. But man, has it accelerated, right? And and because it's accelerated, I think Microsoft is is really changing their business model. And the Xbox hardware, the console hardware, is not their platform anymore. Game Pass is their platform. It's their ecosystem, and they're going to want people to come into it. So it it was it was very interesting to hear all everybody's different takes. But um, you know, I wanted to try to remove my gamer hat out and and try to not have any bias towards it and just look at it from a business perspective because in the end believe it or not these gaming companies whether it's sony nintendo microsoft whoever it is amazon google they're in the business of making money it's it's all about profitability making money it's always about making money it's never about the gamers you know and 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 the and if you, if you're a gamer out there and you decide to stick a flag in and say hey i'm gonna be Team Xbox, I'm going to be Team PlayStation, I'm going to be Team Nintendo, or, or Team Google, or Team Amazon, whatever you want. Um, you know, the, the only people that are catering to you is the marketing team. Every company has a really good PR marketing team. And, the, you know, they, they listen and they hear what's what's being chattered out there. And they're going to position on social media and from a marketing perspective, um, you know, things that make their their hardcore fans feel good about owning their system it's it's branding it's marketing it's all branding it's all marketing you know and, and that's it but the companies as a core it's all about business it's all about making money and and everybody knows that and that's why you know microsoft knows that that's why they have a digital version sony knows that that's why there's a digital version of the ps5 because you know they get more profit selling you digital games uh they undercut the retailers they don't have to print anything there's no inventory there's no shipping so guys this is all business and, and i'm just trying to be very objective here so yes the acquisition of bethesda shook the gaming industry but i think microsoft's not done and even the you know Sate, um the ceo of microsoft stated you know they're not done acquiring studios and believe it or not believe it or not all these companies, they acquire other studios. You know, Sony just recently acquired Insomniac. And Insomniac, you know, they, they made, you know, games on PlayStation, but also made a game on Xbox as well, too. So they acquired Insomniac for $200 million, and, and And that was a good move on Sony. They got really good value for Insomniac. But, yeah, Microsoft, I mean, they're, the, what, what this acquisition tells me as a gamer and also looking at it from a business perspective is that Microsoft is in it for the long game you don't pull out 7.5 billion dollars to publish to, to acquire a publisher like bethesda and not be investing in the future of your ecosystem and and that ecosystem uh, you know it, it's it's hard for a lot of people to swallow but it is going to be game pass and you know the and and you know that's why when you look at that mobile space right mobile is like close to 80 billion dollars a year no wonder microsoft you know try to strike a deal with samsung and get the game pass app loaded on the, the the samsung phone out of the box right because again samsung is competing against apple in the mobile space and you know they're fighting for market share so already out of the box if samsung phones have game pass on there microsoft's reaching a huge audience out there and and even though you guys might think oh cloud gaming is far away it's getting better and better, uh, believe it or not. I mean, I'm I'm testing xCloud right now. I'm text I'm testing remote play on on local Wi-Fi and on cellular. And man, the technology is definitely getting there. Bandwidth is growing uh, from from an ISP standpoint, from a cellular standpoint, from a broadband standpoint. So we're we're definitely going to get there, guys. And cloud gaming is going to be uh, a, a very important piece. Of, of gaming and believe it or not even if, if people are complaining about latency and all that stuff all that's going to get fixed uh, all that's going to get refined they're going to learn they're going to become better and and already from my experience with xcloud i'm pretty impressed already and and if they can optimize that and make that even a, a much more smoother um you know um uh, transition in terms of you know loading up your games on your mobile phones and you know um and controlling the games it you know, it's it's going to be huge, and, and and Microsoft knows that they're good, they want to make the money. And, and if you just want to look at just the numbers they have right now, 
uh, you know, look look at what they announced. They were at 10 million subscribers in April, and then within five or six months, now they're at uh, what 15 million subscribers for Game Pass. Now, Game Pass right now, you have the Ultimate, which is 15 bucks, and then I believe there's a, a lower tier right around 10 bucks. So worst case scenario, let's average it down to 10 bucks. And, you know, they're not getting 15 bucks per month subscription, but if they're getting only $10 right now with 15 million subscribers, that's $150 million a month that they're pulling in revenue for Game Pass. Okay, $150 million a month. Most games, you know, AAA games, you know, they, they cost about $100 million in budget. So already in one month, they have pulled in enough revenue to pay for a AAA game. And on top of that, you know, having games under Game Pass it really takes away the pressure of these developers to, to, to try to hit target goals for how much they need to sell their games in order to recoup their costs back. If you have a subscription-based model right now at $15 million, you're pulling $150 million a, a month. In one year, you're pulling about $1.8 billion in revenue with 15 million subscribers just right now. So now that they've announced that they've acquired Bethesda and all these other IPs are coming under the Xbox Game Pass umbrella, guess what? In a year from now, let's bookmark this video. In a year from now, September 2021, uh, the end of September 2021, let's see how many subscribers Microsoft has on Game Pass. Let's say if they're able to double that. Let's say that by a year from now, they go from you know, 15 million to 30 million because they're, they're in a trajectory right now to, uh, to acquire 1 million subscribers a month right so you know they just have to overshoot it by 300 000, um three mil not 300 three million more subscribers than their one million a month average which they can possibly do uh with now with the announcement of bethesda right but let's say they hit 30 million subscribers a month and I say and again average average the monthly subscription down to ten dollars which is their mid-tier right so you're gonna have some that 15 and some at 10 and some maybe lower if they have a lower tier just to get people started but i think it's going to be that 10 or 15 so let's just average it at 10. so at 10 dollars per subscriber at 30 million subscribers that's 300 million dollars a month that they're pulling in and that's doubling that 1.8 billion to to what that's uh 3.6 billion dollars a year 3.6 billion dollars a year from Game Pass subscription if they make that 30 million subscriber mark. Now, multiply that by two, and you're getting and so basically if, if they have if they reach that 30 million subscribers and then they can keep that consistently, right now theoretically, the 7.5 billion dollars that they just placed for Bethesda, man, they can probably recoup it in about three years if their trajectory is correct. You know? And that's crazy that they're spending 7.5 billion dollars now and in three years they've made that all that money back already that they, they they purchased Bethesda with how crazy is that and that's where that business aspect of the gaming industry comes into play and I believe that's why Microsoft is really adopting this blue ocean strategy because the blue ocean strategy if you guys don't know is you don't compete in the bloody red waters where everybody's just all for themselves, right? You don't compete against that. That's why, you know, after the GameCube, Nintendo realized they can't compete against Sony and Microsoft. So they started doing their own thing. And that brought a lot of really cool innovation. There was a high risk to that, but the high risk comes high reward, you know? So so Microsoft is adopting the same thing. They've reevaluated themselves as a as as a company and they realize Sony is not their competition. Nintendo is not their competition. There's going to be a bigger comp competitor coming in that's going to try to have that ecosystem that spans across everything that I talked about earlier, from mobile to PC to console. And that's the Amazons of the world. That's Google and whoever else wants to try to tackle that, right? And in the end, the, the model that they're trying to build is they want to be the first to it to market and build out their base because eventually, you know, if Nintendo decides to create a subscription model, they're going to have a ton of great content first party wise and they can do the same thing. And Sony, I mean, they, they've been around since 1995 in the gaming industry with the PlayStation one. So, you know, Sony's only been around what, 25 years uh, in gaming. So they have some first party, not as strong as Nintendo. Uh, and I would say used to be stronger than Microsoft, but now with all these additional IPs that Microsoft has, 
and they're I would say they're on par. If not, I think Microsoft has a little bit edge from a Western developer standpoint with some of the RPGs and things like that. But you know, it's it's pretty on par. So I think you know, with that, I think Microsoft is building for the future, and I, I believe Bethesda is only the beginning. They might have the uh, you know, and they they have the funds to go out there and acquire other studios. But I think Bethesda was the biggest one. Um, I think if 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 it was up to me, and I, and again, putting my business hat on. There's some really good developers right now that are, are, are ripe for the picking. Uh, IO Interactive, I mean, I believe Square dumped them. Uh, they're, they're the developers that did Hitman. They're finishing up the Hitman series. So I think that could be a good developer to pick up at a very good value. Um, you know, um, so, so yeah, I, I, think, I think there's definitely some ones out there. I think some of the rumors going around with Sega and, you know, some of the Japanese developers, I think that's... Um, a little bit more off. I mean, can they do it? Yeah, but do they want to do it? There's there's going to have to be some compelling argument. Um, I mean, you know, if you buy Sega, you're buying, what, Sammy, and you're also buying Atlas. So, it, yeah, it could bolster their market share in Japan. Uh, some of the bigger companies in Japan, I, it's, I believe it's going to be harder to buy, but who knows? If you throw money at it, anything can happen, you know? I mean, there's, you know, Namco is too big. They're making too much money going multi-plat. Capcom is too big right now because they're making a ton of money going multi-plat. would have been a different story if they would approach Capcom like a few years ago when Capcom was struggling. But, I mean, Capcom now has kind of rebounded. They're making tons of money with Monster Hunter. Um, and Resident Evil, so I think you know Capcom's going to be harder to get. Uh, SquareSoft, uh, Square Enix, they're I think they found that it's they've been very successful going multi-plat and PC, and uh, and yeah, it's it's going to be interesting, guys. Uh, I mean, it's 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 fun times right now, and just like a lot of other industries out there, it's going to be uh, and, and you know as gamers we might not like this, but it happens to all the other industries when companies get really big and the market becomes a very big huge market a lot of things get saturated and what happens is things get consolidated acquisitions and mergers start to happen and i think this is the only beginning i think based off of this you're gonna see um you know some some other major acquisitions um you know there's definitely some third-party publishers out there that are fine uh, you know, making money and developing games and not releasing consoles. So that's the other argument, too, is that a lot of people think, oh, Microsoft is going to lose this generation because they're not going to sell enough consoles. You can, they're still going to be making money. They don't have to hit the $100 million, uh, 100 million units target like Sony does. They're going to make their money through Game Pass. And, and you just saw me break down the revenue a month and annually. If they hit those numbers, it's ridiculous numbers. And they'd rather be doing that and grabbing more market share and mind share in mobile and PC than just focusing on consoles only. And and I think that's the reason why as as a PlayStation fan myself and, and I have, you know, a bunch of PlayStations that I um, and a lot of games that I play on my PlayStation, look at what Sony did. They brought some of their exclusives to PC because again, Sony's not stupid. S Sony un is probably looking at some very similar statistics and are going how do we capture more of that market i mean you think about it they they try to put playstation on mobile too with the with the the, the sony phone division so again these these companies it's all about money guys it's it's never about the fans it's always about money if they can make money they are going to enter that so i think microsoft with this bethesda acquisition um you know definitely a different change in perspective and from a business perspective, I, you know, again, I'm, they, they're going with this blue ocean strategy, and it's, it's definitely giving them a leg up, because they're, they're carving the market out with Game Pass, and you can tell when you're successful when competitors are trying to come in into that space, and, um, you know, how, you know, and, and the best signaling is like, look at Amazon, look at how big Amazon is. Amazon is a trillion dollar company, bigger than Sony. And they decided to throw some money and get into the gaming space because they know there's money to be made. Google, another trillion dollar company. Why did they go into cloud uh, streaming, right, with Stadia? They knew that there was money to be made in gaming. They saw the numbers. And it's all about the numbers, guys. It's like when you're talking to the ex these executives, you have to build out a business plan. You have to let them know what your vision is, short term and long term. And you got to tell them this is this is why it's worth investing the money now to build for the future. And and I think one of the things again, uh, I'm I'm really happy that you know um, 
that Microsoft went through the what they went through in order to realize this. Because as a gamer, it's only going to benefit us in the end when there's you know competition, when there's innovation, uh, when companies are willing to take risks. Um, and you know, and you know, you, for me, seeing as how you know um, a company like other companies have taken risks, you know, yeah, they they failed. But they've learned from their mistakes and they've rebounded and they've become stronger and better for that. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, this next generation on how Microsoft positions Game Pass. Uh, you know, I, I was telling you guys that I'm a collector, so I like the physical media, but I do have Game Pass Ultimate. So it has allowed me to play games that I've normally never would have purchased. And going into this next generation, guys, it's it's going to be expensive as a physical collector. Because, you know, the, the, the game market now has increased these new releases now to 70 bucks a title. So for me, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm probably going to wait until there's a sale or when these first party titles drop in price. And, you know, one, one thing that is beneficial is that, you know, Sony is not like Nintendo. Their prices, the first party games drop fairly quickly. So that's why I'm still investing in physical media on that front. But yeah, Game Pass has allowed me to really embrace some of these games that I would have never purchased, but is available for me day one, which is ridiculous. So it's a good hybrid of having digital and physical in terms of a gamer on my end, because I have, you know, uh, for this next generation, I have my PS5 pre-ordered, I have my Xbox Series X pre-ordered, and I'm right now trying to secure a freaking RTX 3080 for PC gaming, so I'm going to be set, but not everybody is in the same position as I am to secure, you know, the game systems or the platforms that you want to play your games in, so, uh, you know, it's 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 not how the, the world works, so, you know, I think Game Pass... Uh, another part of Game Pass and what Microsoft is investing in with with you know acquiring Bethesda and possibly other studios later on is I think Game Pass has really become uh, a reason for accessibility, accessibility to games uh, at a low co low investment cost upfront as a gamer as a consumer, but allowing you to play some of the richest and really cool games out there that you normally would never had access to if you had still had the old model of buying games at the store individually or buying used games or, or whatever it may be i think it's just more accessible so it's it's probably to me in my personal opinion, it's, it's the best value in gaming right now at 15 bucks a month you are getting access to a ton of games, hundreds, and who knows in a few years if it's gonna if their library grows to thousands of games. And and do you even have the time to play all the games? That's that's the other thing too. Is that gaming is a luxury hobby? You know, everybody's trying to fight for your attention, right? When you're not going to work, you're not spending time with the family. What are you doing in your spare time? And if you game then yeah, all these companies are trying to fight for your attention, right? It's uh, Everybody has a certain amount of time free for what they can do, and most people do physical sports, activities, exercise, or they game. So, uh, so uh, you know, definitely there's a business behind this, and, and that's all it is. Like I said, if, uh, if you take out the argument with, with everything that's happening, it's, it's a business, you know? And, um, and I think before I end this, discussion let's let's clearly look uh, at this yahoo interview that phil spencer did um and really talks about when when the uh, person asked him hey uh what do you think about um about the you know with the bethesda acquisition he i believe he asked specifically about a game coming to playstation but let me pause here let's watch it and then i will uh, bring the discussion right afterwards Okay, and I got to ask you about, uh, you guys recently acquired ZeniMax Media. Uh, they're the parent company of the storied studio Bethesda. They've made some games that I probably have spent way too much time with. Elder Scrolls, Fallout, <laughs> Fallout 3, one of my favorite games ever. I guess, you know, $7.5 billion. Uh, Microsoft has been sucking up studios, producing uh, its own first-party games. Two questions. One what does this mean for Microsoft in the future as far as becoming uh, an even He's heavier asking hitter two questions when it to comes fill. to first-party studios? And two, and this is probably the question that a lot of people are wondering, what does it mean for first-party exclusives 
for something like an Elder Scrolls. Now he's we'll asking about Elder Scrolls and whether Microsoft it's going systems, to other systems like or Minecraft. Or will it go across other systems similar to what Microsoft has done with Minecraft? Yeah, really excited about the announcement this week that we intend to acquire ZeniMax, uh, an amazing studios there, takes our overall first party or studio organization to 23 creative studios, um, just a real big investment in content. And really uh, for us, Xbox Game Pass is the flywheel that we're feeding there. Uh, we have over 15 million subscribers now for Game Pass, uh, and it, it continues to grow across console, PC, and, and now with streaming to phones. And we want to make sure that subscribers to Game Pass feel like they have a consistent set of games to go play. Um, in terms of where games will show up, our commitment is that our games will show up in Game Pass and on PC and on console and be available in xCloud. In terms of other platforms, I think we'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But as the Xbox community, what they should feel is this is a huge investment in the experiences that they're going to go have, that they're going to have in the Xbox ecosystem. Um, and we want Xbox ecosystem to be absolutely the best place okay, to play. Now, we think that was a great availability PR is answer, part of that. but this is a little bit more very specific compared to Phil Spencer's other interviews. Just to kind of close out the discussion, he specifically stated that Game Pass is their flywheel. And they've invested this money into making sure that, you know, Xbox players, Game Pass players feel, uh, you know, um, uh, feel proud of the, you know, content that they're putting together, right? Um, so there's there's no doubt that he's definitely, it's all PR speak. He's trying to be very, and, and he had to throw in the last part about case-by-case -case basis, but clearly he led off with really investing into the Game Pass ecosystem, you know, and exclusives and those titles are going to be Game Pass day one. And, you know, a case by case basis, I think it's again, uh, from from the discussion earlier, it's it's PR speak right now. They haven't finalized everything yet. So it's it's there to kind of uh, keep the hopes alive and kind of align with the two games that are going to PS5. But again, it's it's a play that they've invested that much money, that much money, $7.5 billion to really bolster Game Pass. And, and, and that's the play there. And I think if anybody reads otherwise, it's wishful thinking. And who knows? I, I could be wrong. And, you know, um, Microsoft and Phil Spencer will announce that, you know, these games will be coming to PlayStation 5 or other platforms like Nintendo. But for the time being, I, I have to, again, take my gamer hat off put my business hat on and really see this for what it is. If, if, if the shoe was on the other foot and Sony or Nintendo acquired a company like Bethesda, what do you think? Do you think those companies would allow those games to go on the Microsoft platform or the PC? Again, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, the, it's, it's been interesting and, and that's why I didn't want to make this video un, un, until, you know, a week has gone by because I think listening to what's out there, there's a lot of hypocrisy out there. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a gamer. Uh, I'm not a fanboy, you know, uh, uh, and do I love a lot of Sony games? Yes. Do I love a lot of N Nintendo games? Yes. Do I love a lot of Microsoft games? Yes. I love games in general. Okay. And, and I will wear shirts for any of the gaming platforms out there just because i love gaming uh do i love pc gaming i do too i still have my old um 3dfx voodoo card you know uh so it's uh, uh you know as a gamer you know i i'm i'm very excited about where we're heading uh, but also, you know, you, as a gamer, I understand the business side of things. And uh, this is, in the end, business, guys. It's about making money. It's about building out their brand. And it's about building out their ecosystem, period. Microsoft made this play to build out Game Pass. And they're not going to follow the model with what they did with Minecraft. Because Minecraft was, again, was such a big global phenomenon. And it's a platform in itself. Uh, you know, the things that you're going to see from Bethesda that's still going to be multi-plat are those services that they have already in play with like uh, Elder Scrolls Online, things like that. But newer titles, newer single player experience titles are going to be exclusive to the Xbox Game Pass ecosystem. And, and that's my opinion. You know, uh, let me know 
what your thoughts are on this and what your opinions are. It would be great to hear. Uh, if you like the content, hit like. If you dislike what I talk about, hit dislike because I like to hear from you guys on the type of topics that you guys would want to um, you know, uh, listen in on. Um, and, uh, and let me know. Uh, like I said, um, you know, for me, uh, I'm a gamer at heart. Um, you know, the, the channel that I have put up on YouTube is, is just for fun, guys. I have a full-time job. I do this for fun. I throw things up that are useful, that are fun, that talk about games, things like that. So uh, I'm, I'm not taking gaming seriously. You guys should not <laughs> be, you know, uh, taking this seriously. Have fun. You want to have fun with the games that you're playing, regardless of what platform you play it on, guys. You know, and, and I'm happy for you. Whether you want to play it on PlayStation, whether you want to play it on Nintendo, where you want to play it on Xbox, where you want to play it on PC, on mobile. Dude, I'm happy for you, man. Enjoy your games because you have access to those games. And, and that's really what, what the whole gaming community should be about. It's not about these toxic discussions and, like, my... My, my camp is better than your camp. I mean, what are you arguing about? Arguing about a piece of plastic and some electronics that's better than someone else's piece of plastic and some electronics? You know, it's it's kind of childish. And, uh, you know, from 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 a, from a gamer perspective, a true gamer perspective, it's all about the games. It's about the content. And content is always going to be king. If the content is there, I don't care what platform, how fast things are going, um, you know, what kind of technology it is. If it's fun, it's fun. You know, look at the top games that are being streamed right now. And one of them being Among Us. Look at the graphics on that. It's on mobile and Steam, right? It's, it's popular as hell. It's fun as hell. And people are streaming it. It doesn't push. It doesn't need a system that's pushing 12, 20 teraflops, right? To be fun. So, guys, don't take gaming seriously. Just enjoy it. You know, let me know what's your top game that you guys like to play um, and post it in the comments. And again, uh, appreciate the time stopping by uh, and I'll be posting uh, more discussions in the future. Uh, one of the one of the topics that um, was brought up is maybe talking about my time working at Electronics Boutique. Um, I was there when it was Electronics Boutique. It's transitioned to EB Games and during the acquisition of GameStop. So, uh, you know, I, I managed the store. Um, was working there for about maybe yeah about seven years and uh, there's a lot of stories to talk about uh, and that might be a reserve for another um, podcast or another video uh, on another date so appreciate the time thank you guys and uh, have a great week i'll talk to you guys later